Now, these are the steps in a form and delay survey. Okay, so we have the form and orientation, the collection of delay reports, the report summarization, review of results and visible possible action. We'll go through these steps and give you a little more detail on what happens in each. So, when we do an orientation, like I mentioned earlier, this is to mainly to explain the details of the method. You have people have to understand why, what are the types of delays? What does a delay happen? It's not regular in construction just to have delay. It's not a given. We should be able to notice that it is happening and be able to quantify it. Now, when you do this, it shows management commitment. It, it's a little bit of training for the foreman to you know, act from a management perspective. And one very, very important aspect is we should assure it's not a fault finding exercise. A lot of times we have come across situations where foremen are reluctant to share data because they think they will be asked to take the blame. The management here should be clear that any that it is an exercise to be able to uh, enable management to take corrective action and they, and they will take corrective action and it's not just to put the blame on the form. Now, this is easy to say, but in many, many cases we have found that a lot of foremen have tough time believing that the management will not blame them if there's a delay and getting that cooperation has been an issue. But at the same time, in several sites, we have found that once the foremen are convinced that this is an exercise which is going to result in overall easing of their work, getting them the required resources at the right time, etc., there is a tremendous amount of cooperation and this foreman orientation really helps with that. Now, when you go into the form they have to fill out, one of the NA, one of the real enablers is the form is fairly simple. So, in the orientation program, they have to be taught as to how to fill the form. And again, the form is not necessarily, uh, st I mean, while most people use the format shown here, if you would like to have any other category, then it is it is more than okay to add or delete with something that is, add something that is relevant to your project and delete something that is not relevant. So, if you like, analyze the form, you have some general information on the crew, date, for you know, the foreman, foreman name and the key is the categories of delays. So, you can see here there are changes due to design, changes due to you know, prefabrication error, field error or waiting for materials, waiting for tools. So, these are the weight categories, these are the rework categories. And so, you have your categories which people have identified are common categories for waste and idling and delay in construction. These are the common categories. Like I said, if you want to add or change, that's fine. Now, what is done here is you find the number of hours a crew or you know has waited and the number of workers in the crew. Okay, so for each of these, the foreman would fill out which category of delay was there and then quantify the total hours of delay that occurred. This seems very simplistic. It is simplistic, but if the foreman are able to or the supervisor is able to do fill this out meaningfully, it means that you have been able to get good information on what's happening at the work phase in, in a very simple way. Now, once you collect the delay report. So, basically you would have to do the survey once a week okay, for every month or one week every month. Actually, it is one week every month you do the do the uh, do the uh, survey and as you can see the simple part of the form taking only 5 minutes to fill out at the end of the day is, is actually the, the biggest uh, enabler of the form. Nobody wants to fill out and fill a questionnaire for 20-30 minutes at the end of the day or end of the week. So, for each day of the week, at the end of the day, they will fill out this form and give it to you. Data is collected on all crew and like we said, it is dependent on the foreman's willingness to cooperate and his or her skills and a lot of times, I am just repeating, we have found that even though there can be initially a little bit of reluctance once they see that the management is committed and if the management is truly committed, there is buy-in and there is benefit to this. Now, uh, then the delay reports are summarized. So, this is a typical summary that you can see here. Okay, this is person hours lost for different categories. Okay, you can see this is for you know for, for a particular category how much is lost and the percentage of time that is lost. So, if you look at this for example, in design change, error or change, okay, there were so many person hours lost. So that seems to be one very critical issue. Okay, so we then start 
Now, is change of design in the control of the foreman? No. Okay, so if we take some action to kind of uh, you know look at design, review design, or to how do we kind of make sure this change or error is avoided? If it's possible, I think that would that would kind of build more uh, you know try to bring that down. Waiting for construction equipment. Okay, it's another category which is taking time. So this again jumps out of the from the analysis. Now this might be something on site with a better equipment management or you know requisition pattern we might be able to you know reduce this waiting. Similarly, if you look at some other say 70 might be in the meeting with the foreman will have to ask what is this other, how did this come about, what are the details of this, how do I resolve this, you know field error or damage. So, you can take item by item and it gives you a detailed discussion on various categories and there will be a, so much of probably communication on that that becomes beneficial to understand what are causing these problems. Now, reviewing results with foremen, you know is your meeting small groups of foremen, you are presenting the analysis of the delay report and this is this people have found it this is very important because it re, I mean it is not that the, the report came you know was submitted, somebody analyzed it, somebody did something with it and it went off. One week they submitted reports and there is no results on it. The feedback that is coming back to the foreman, showing the numbers, showing the big pictures makes them feel they are a part of the whole organization and it has had a really uh, strong motivational aspect and makes the meeting worthwhile. Okay, not only this, but you also get the opportunity to sometimes this best solution. So, you know we have we have heard this that a lot of lot of what happens in lean is about empowering people. So, this you know bringing this in actually not only empowers people, but enables them to bring in their ideas and sometimes those ideas are the best ideas. The top down ideas are not necessarily the best ideas. So, here is a tool that enables that also. Okay, and ultimately you have to take visible positive action that is if you know if there is a report on equipment non-availability, how do we facilitate that? If there is a requirement on uh, you know material issues, how do we change our material management plan to do it? So, there should be a positive action that is taken to try to address these delays that are there. This demonstrates commitment, okay, it improves communication and definitely if this is collaborative there is buy in for the solution. Okay, if, this, if, there, if it is a solution that has come up from the, the field and it is implemented there is a lot of motivation. Okay, generally people have found it is low cost okay, and the foreman okay, and then the foreman also think that the whole program is successful and it kind of brings in it kind of spirals up. There is lot more participatory uh, decision making participatory contribution to the team.